War propaganda is maybe as old as war itself. Until recently, it used to be the main domain of governments, of state actors, and of the traditional media. This has changed dramatically. Today, everybody can open up his own propaganda channel on Twitter, YouTube, or Facebook. And what is new as well is that state actors, as well as terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda or the so-called Islamic State, IS, can hide behind individuals and so-called internet trolls who post propaganda on their behalf. This is new. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they have started to block accounts of uh, propagandists of the IS, of Al-Qaeda. They don't want to show too bloody content. But what do the terrorists and the terrorist supporters do when this happens? They can simply migrate to other less known social media sites like uh, archive.org or just paste.it and post their bloody content, their message of hate there. So, if you want to post a video glorifying the IS, you simply upload it on a site like sendvid.com and then you link it with your Twitter account. That is very hard for governments to prevent. Now, the Islamic State has supporters all around the world, thousands of sympathizers who post messages for the IS and thereby multiply its message of hate. And other actors in the Syrian war do this as well. Actually, Syria is the first conflict where all warring parties mainly use social media to spread their message. Now, is this bad? Not necessarily, as long as the pictures and videos that are being posted are not fakes, you can still retrieve a lot of information behind the propaganda message. If you look hard, if you have a local and a specialist knowledge, and this is exactly what I want to show you here. Let's have a, a first look at the Russian propaganda in Syria. You know, Russia has intervened about uh, six weeks ago in the Syrian war, and the Kremlin claims that they are mainly fighting the IS, the terrorists. They say there is Assad, the regime, and the terrorists, and nothing else in between. The second message that they want to bring to us is that, of course, their war is a success story. And they want to show the world that they, too, can fight a high-tech war, like the Americans. But contrary to the Americans, the Russians pretend that their strikes against the IS are much more decisive and much, much more efficient. Let's have a look at this video, which is which has been posted by the uh, Russian Ministry of Defense, it shows an airstrike on a bunker in Syria. This very much looks like a similar American video that you can see about airstrikes in Iraq or Syria by American bombers. Let's have a closer look. First, at the landscape. This seems to be an agricultural area. The Russians say that this is in Hama province. I'll show you uh, a map in a, in a minute. And you can see fields, you can see probably wheat fields, and the plantations that you can see here are olive plantations. I've been to this area, uh, it looks a bit like Tuscany with hills and olive trees, hundreds of thousands of olive trees. Now the Russians say this was a bunker, it was a terrorist target, and it was in Hama province. Hama province is the green one in the center with a number of seven. Now, the IS has only a pre presence, and only a presence in the easternmost part of this province, not in the western part. Now here, a close-up on Google Earth. You can see the provincial capital, Hama. You can see those uh, green spots. These are the agricultural fields, the olive uh, plantations. And then, in the east, you only see desert. This was a picture that the IS posted and claimed that it was 
taken in the eastern part of Hamar province, and there you see it's a desert. There are no olive trees, no chance for wheat fields. So actually, when the Russians say they are hitting the Islamic State with this video here, it's simply a blatant lie. There is no IS in that era. There are rebels, there are other terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, but it's not IS. And we should, simply shouldn't believe the Russians when they are saying we are in Syria predominantly to fight the IS. But now something else. Look again where the crosshairs is. The crosshairs is on the target, on this alleged bunker. We don't know if this target exists. But look where the impact of the bomb is. It's quite far away. In Syria, the peasants plant the olive trees about 10 meters distance from each other. So if you count the tree lines there, you could estimate that the pilot missed by at least 50 meters. So this airstrike was not a precision airstrike. We don't know what weapons were used, but it's obvious the pilot didn't hit his target. Let's have a closer look at the military hardware that the Russians are using, because they are claiming to fight a modern high-tech war. They fired uh, 26 modern expensive cruise missiles in this war. But the main tasks are being uh, taken by these old planes, uh, dating from the 1960s. Now have a close look at the bombs underneath. These are the bombs mainly used in Syria. Here's another plane, also uh, fairly old, it's the uh, 70s. And I've seen both of these planes already in the war of the Soviet Union against, uh, against the Afghans in the mid-80s. And actually, they were dropping the same kinds of bombs there as well. That was not yet the time of precision bombs in the 80s. Now, these are the bombs that you have seen underneath the wings of this last plane. Uh, it's the 250-kilogram bomb. You can see it here on such a, a fighter bomber. Over Syria, you see the, the pilot is flying very high. And actually, this, the design of these bombs stems from the 1950s or 60s. It's basically technology of the Second World War. These are dumb bombs. As soon as the pilot, pilot drops them, he has no more control over them. He cannot tell the bomb to fly here or there. So it really depends on his ability to hit the target if he hits the so-called terrorists or he hits a building nearby and kills 20 civilians. So now they're gone. Here the same thing. The pilot drops four bombs at once. No control over them. And once you see the black uh, and white video again, you can see it was not a hit on the target. Same thing as before. This is an airbase in uh, Syria. Russian planes are taking off here. And this is actually the only modern plane that the Russians use in Syria. It's a Sukhoi 34. And a few days ago, I filmed exactly this type over southern Aleppo in Syria. Now look what happens. You can see a small bomb, and of course we cannot tell from these images what kind of bomb is. Is it a smart bomb, a guided bomb? Is it a dumb bomb? Is it a cluster bomb? When I took these pictures, I took cover, of course. So I didn't see the impact of the bomb, but I heard it. And I heard not one explosion, but about two dozen at the same time, more or less. So this is a proof that this bomb was actually a cluster bomb, a bomb that explodes in midair and spreads about 20 to 100, sometimes 200 small bomblets over a large area. And of course, nobody has the control about these bomblets, where they fall and whom they kill. And many of them remain there as a as duds, they don't explode. So these bombs are forbidden in most countries, but Russia and Syria and also the United States, they are still ready to use them. But it's a, it's a bomb that kills indiscriminately. It's not a precision bomb. Now, just to show you what it means, four years of 
random bombing, random artillery shelling. This is a beautifully shot Russian video which shows the destruction after four years of exactly such kinds of bombings. Here you see a bomb being dropped on an industrial complex. We don't know if it's a rebel base, a terrorist base, it. if it's empty. This is what this war is about. It's just a continuation of the destruction caused by Assad's army and Assad's air force. Only that the Russians, they do it more decisively. Um, they are better trained pilots. They are stronger than, than Assad's army. So the destruction is even worse. And we can expect to see hundreds of thousands of refugees from those areas that are being bombed now. So Russia is actually not fighting a high-tech war, but it's fighting a war probably like the one in Afghanistan where they committed almost genocide in destroying just most of the rural areas, most of the villages that were not under their own control. Now, we have another warring party, the Islamic State, and we have a lot of propaganda of the Islamic State in our media, portraying the Islamic State as invincible with uh, modern equipment, um, fearless fighters, um, nobody can, can win the war against them. And they are said to have a lot of American equipment that they captured, especially from the Iraqi army, which is true. They captured a lot of things from the Iraqi army, like this American howitzer, which uh, stems from the late 1970s. This is one of the most modern weapons that the IS is using, but they're lacking the ammunition. An American Humvee, that's a uh, 1980s uh, technologies, also not uh, very recent. This is a very old uh, armored personnel carrier. We also used it here in Switzerland. It was widely used in Vietnam, um, 1960s. Then most of the equipment is actually not American. It's uh, Soviet-era stuff, like this uh, armored personnel carrier, also about 50 years old, heavy artillery from the same time. And this is actually the, the standard main battle tank of the IS, they like this one very much, especially because the ammunition is so cheap. But this is really a museum piece. It's from the 1950s. It's very hard to have an objective picture of this terrorist organization, because there are no journalists who can go there. Not even me, I can go there. But there have been a few people there, and this is actually a short clip by Vice News. This is an independent video, it's not uh, IS propaganda. Look what you see. Now, these fighters, these IS fighters, they don't take aim before they shoot. They are not professional soldiers, obviously not. And what is even more interesting is, these people are afraid to die. They are like us. You know, they hide behind the sandbags. They don't take aim. They are afraid to raise their heads over the sandbags and, and, and shoot precisely. So, these people, they are not the fearless fighters that the IS wants to uh, portray. So, we shouldn't fall for neither the propaganda of the IS, nor the Russian one, and we should remember that not everything is at, as the social media want us to believe. Thank you.